in an age of fast development in every sphere of life and to prove one's mettle in the competitive environment, education plays a very special role. Viewers, as we all know, education plays a great role in the changing times and this is well proved in the words of Arthur Kostler who talks of education as creativity and says that it is the bonding between the teacher and the pupil and how they carry it forward successfully. So basically, it is the duty of each of us as individuals on how we realize the importance and value education. So viewers, let's cross check with some eminent intellectuals and students of some of the premier institutes of Northeast and get their views on what they think on the pattern of education. Viewers, let's take the view on the pattern of education from Dr. Devaprasad Borua, ex-Vice Chancellor of Guwahati University and Emeritus Fellow of UGC. I would like to take the period since independence. I had the privilege of serving in the UGC peer review committee prior to the last one. At that time, we made a count of the number of institutions in a country right at the time of after the Republic came into existence. We found that in 1951 there were 22 universities, 500 colleges, and like students. As of now, in 2010, there are 504 university level institutions, universities, IITs, dimly universities, though it has now become controversial somewhat, but still then, university level institutions, there are 504. 25,951 colleges, which are eligible for assistance from the UGC. So it excludes a number of colleges, thousands of colleges, which are non-recognized. And we have 1.36 crore of students. In no country in the world, you have 10% entry into the state of higher education. In the West, roughly 46%. Uh, or maybe in some cases 50 percent. In our country, the students of the eligible group at the higher stage, higher education stage, do not number more than, say, 12 to 16 percent. Now, of course, the present education minister, human rights development minister, has taken steps to assure us that with the Years of years, they will plan to raise it to 30 percent, 36 percent or so. It will be a big jump. So, com compared to the time of Foundation of the Republic, vast advances have taken place. There's no doubt about it. But when you look at the problem from the point of view of inclusiveness, equity, we are far removed from. The goal set for us by the education clause of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they say everyone has the right to of entry to the higher education states, limited education being primary. This is very good. And our constitutional provision, at that time it was the director principle, of free primary, compulsory primary education that was drawn from the UDHR. My point is, although we have advanced to such a great extent, we do not as yet have enough of universities, enough of colleges, 
enough of schools. We have had a number of election commissions in the country, right from the time of the University Education Commission, headed by no less a person than Dr. Radhakrishnan. Then we had this Kothari Commission. It was a national commission, but it had members from foreign countries also. I should have thought that barring the university level stays, this report of the Education Commission, the subtitle was Education for National Development. Education Commission Report 6466. Now the policies elaborated in the Commission's report were accepted, might be in the entirety, through the first national education policy of Free India in 1968. Some people confuse about national education policy with that of 19. It was one during Rajiv Gandhi's time. No. First, we had a national education policy of 1968 on the basis of Kothari Commission's report. Now, the Kothari Commission recommended that 6% of the ENP should be earmarked for education. You find all the commissions thereafter, including the commission headed by uh, the, the, which came out with a report towards an enlightened and humane society. I said you Ramurti was the chairperson. Then also you are 6%. Now also the government says 6%. But 6% of 1968, if you translate it in terms of today's escalating, spreading rise in prices, what it should be, 30%, more than that? I should have thought for a big leap forward, as it were, for a big leap forward in the field of education. When you spend money it, uh, for education, it is not spending, it is investment in uh, national advance, which is why in the Kothari Commission report, the first sentence, it is a uh, more than 600 page report. It said, the destiny of India is be being shaped in her classrooms. That ought to be made into a reality. Coming to Northeast, India's Northeast, is an Eric town, but it consists of seven states with distinctive personality. In the composite state of Assam, only the Guwahati University was there. It's a premier university, still a premier university in the Northeast. But after the reorganization of Assam, we have seven states. Sikkim has been added for purposes of Northeastern Council, as seven sisters, we say. Previously, there was one university in the entire region. But people have come to consider, people love education. Because education gives you the right, strength for human advancement, for employment, even the market economy. To spend the market, you need money. For earning money, you have to have education. It is also related to market economy. Today, much is made about privatization of education. I should have thought that privatization always for private profit. The state sponsored universities, they have still to they have still their role to play. Sometimes the constitutional obligation in higher education to provide standards. The centers are sponsored. So I think, although nowadays we have at least one university in each of the states, more than one. We have central universities, state universities, 
But the entire investment system in the country is based on more, there are more state universities than central universities. Central universities do not have enough of problems regarding finance. State universities are start of funds. The 42nd Amendment to the Constitution put education on the concurrent list. The 42nd Amendment was amended when Morozi Desai's government came. That concurrency was not abolished. It is still there. Concurrency means the center in the state, states, ought to cooperate in preserving standards, education advance, the constitutional obligation. So, government should see to it that the state universities are not start of funds. So viewers, let's take the view of eminent academicians on the existing system of education. Madam, do you think that the present system of higher education serves the purpose with which it was started? It is very difficult to say in a positive way because the society is changing, political scenario is changing, economic conditions are different, plannings are different. So, educational planning also has to be changed according to the needs of the country. From that point of view, what we want to say that from the Kadi culture, we are coming to the electronic technologies age. And from that point of view, we find that higher education is at a crossroad to serve the purposes of the nation. What we feel that once upon a time, university was considered to be an ivory tower where only teaching was given, imparted. But now afterwards it was added research. And Kuthari Commission added another area that is what we call extension, serving the society. These three aims or objectives have taken a great part in, the, in changing the concept of higher education. And from that point of view, we find that universities are working in a way which it couldn't fulfill fully the purposes of Qatari Commission. Secondly, we find that there is a conflict now between state universities, central universities, and private universities. Knowledge Commission has agreed to have private universities to speed up the objectives or the implementation of the purposes for which the universities have to work. State universities are starving from financial problems. St central universities, yes, they are getting good finance from the central government, but all the time we find that because of the majority because majority of the state universities, they are facing financial stringency. And for that purpose, they couldn't provide new curricula, new subjects, modern equipments, audiovisual aids, and cannot introduce modern technique of teaching. Then how can we expect that the purposes of higher education could be solved if change is not made in the structure, in the equipment, and in the organization, in the implementation of the planning or plan of the university. So it is very difficult nowadays 
when we feel, when we go to the UGC, UGC gave some money, money for maintenance. Thing is that when projects are given, they are delayed by payment of money because there are so many mechanisms that through which the uh, uh, project is to be finalized. And f so projects could not be done immediately within the time limit of the order of the project. So, so many problems are there. It is very difficult, maintenance problems. University couldn't maintain the buildings very nicely. As you know, the Guwahati University's library is, is, has destroyed many valuable documents because the rain is coming through the roof. So, these problems are coming, it is very difficult. And the thing is that the fees cannot be increased from the fees because it is difficult for the students to pay high fees. Why? Why they should pay? They have to pay, the fees will be increased, not in the way they have charged. So naturally there is hesitation everywhere, in Dibuga University, in Gaunt University, any other places, the f students are not agreeable to the proposal that they have to pay fees. So that is another problem. Financial difficulty is the main blockade, so to say, in the development of university education, so to say, state universities. As an alternative, the Knowledge Commission has suggested that private universities are to be opened by private bodies, by industrialists, by other industrial houses, so that they can afford to have better equipment, better curricula, better subject for teaching the students and to make them equipped for the modern India. Industry is the only thing. Globalization, liberalization, and rapid expansion of electronic technology have changed the whole scenario of higher education in India. Now, what we have found that it has its effect in the primary and secondary education also. In primary education and secondary education, what we have found that more English medium schools are coming up. Why? Because they have to learn through English if they have to go to the modern subjects started by private bodies. Madam, we have seen that the students from Northeast flock outside in search of higher studies. So aren't the institutions and universities here suitable to cope up to their needs? To your question, I must say that though every year many students are flocking outside, but still many students are studying here also. Yes, they go outside to in the search that they may get something better from here and that is very important also and not only now but before also they used to go and we have seen so many scholars also they are studied they were studying outside and they have got very good education etc but now it has become a trend uh, as we say in Assamese the khakdehi utilga keto rebele mukukha so many students, they go outside because they think that their uh, friends have gone. And sometimes it so happens that many parents selling their many things, their properties, they go outside. And what they do going outside, they will be just loitering about, not studying so much, and they will be showing that they are studying very much. And in that way, they are uh, doing, they are winning their life. And another thing that many students, they get very good opportunities. And actually, to be very frank, though we are, in some new subjects are coming in our institutions, for example, in the science streams, uh, this biotechnology or bioinformatics, it has started along with our uh, basic subjects. But still, we are not at par with the national level. So, as you know that students, they now always think for their placements, etc. So, they go outside. And another thing is also there that what we have observed that displacement sales, etc. It is very much in, uh, in the other colleges of other states. 
here of course we have started for example in our cotton college itself we are having the placement sale at present and uh, in Bibura College or in Handy Girls College or in other colleges not only in Guwahati but in other parts of Assam also they have started not only that even outside our state for example Meghalaya and Mizoram etc they are also the, it is coming so there is uh, as we had seen that uh, for about eight years back there used to be very much trend of going outside but at present it has lessened little bit because they are getting some facilities here also and also there are some adver uh, advertisements and other such things here and which we are coming up that is one thing and another thing is that these students for example in art stream if you take in our cotton college itself we are not having psychology whereas many children many students they want to study psychology and to study psychology they go to Delhi or they try to uh, go, uh, go to other states where they get the subject but at present in some colleges of course it is coming up uh, that is and in that way we can just stop the flow and as you have asked me whether we are not at par of course we are not at par with the national level but because we have seen that even I have visited this Symbiosis Institute of Media and Communication what I have seen there that the students they are so busy all along and placement sales are also there and they are having so many facilities so we must try to bring those facilities here to stop the flow of the students just to stop the brain drain also because many students when they go outside then they never come to our state and in that way we are losing brain, uh, brains as well as we are also losing money power also. In medical colleges and in engineering colleges also they are coming up very nicely now and there are so many facilities also in medical colleges and the infrastructure has been very much developed and as well as there is some strict disciplines also nowadays the doctors they are also advised not to go for some private practice also and they are given some incentives and by that way uh, as there was a trend of the doctors to go and do practice even the who were teaching also now they have turned come back to their teachings and in that way our students they are of course getting some benefits and as well as I must say that if, even in the engineering colleges some very renowned uh, companies etc for example this Wipro, Infosys and other such companies they are also coming for the placements and so the students they are having some advantage by studying here also so in that way also we are uh, there is some check uh, of the outflow of the students from our state to other states and in that way if we go on doing if we go on developing our study materials and if we just uh, advance our courses etc then definitely we will be able to go at par the national level and in that way we, we can help our state and we can be very much benefited hello uh, well, I would like to ask you a question related to education. Nowadays, we have seen that there is this commercialization of education and there is this trend of taking tuitions at each and every stage of education. So why do you think that there is a real need for it? Yeah, mostly uh, each and every parents thinks that it will send the students to tuitions, they will having a bright career and I mean, uh, Nowadays, more uh, advantage of marks are there. So they think that if we'll send the children, they'll get more marks and having a bright career. I'm not blaming, blaming totally over the parents because they take care of the child, and for the bright career, they they take these decisions. Okay. Would you like to add a point? Yes, I would like to add a point. Uh, she has said that uh, because the parents are sending but not actually it's the responsibility the of the student itself and moreover the syllabus that we have at present uh, of uh, the higher secondary level there is not up to the mark for uh, for appearing uh, for an ent entrance examination so it is necessary to, to some extent moreover to, uh, it is also necessary for the student itself to prepare for him uh, himself for appearing in the examination that he is appearing. Uh, and so you think the tuitions really help him? Really help him, yes. 
what are your views on the prevalent system of education are you satisfied um, as far as i'm concerned uh, i think the present scenario is a, it is satisfactory to some extent but i feel that with some changes brought into it 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 could have been a lot more better i think that the, here people play and people give more importance to the theoretical knowledge that we gain here but actually what we students really want is to have a practical knowledge of this thing because that is what uh, really really enables us to um, to make progress in whatever we are doing in whatever we are learning so according to me um, the education system should be changed a bit so that we get more of the practical knowledge here and less of the theoretical but um, it is it is quite satisfactory i would like to say that um, me being a science student i have always been very much interested in literature too but it it hasn't been possible for me to take up any literature subjects along with my um, zoology as my major subject so i feel very very sad actually because i really wanted to study literature and uh, any other art subject but i'm unable to do this okay you mean along with your yeah, along with our like regular courses in science because it is very important that we know about the arts because uh, if we go abroad then uh, much much importance is given to the english subject then french because uh, nobody really understands uh, hindi and the local languages that we speak here and uh, french and english are given a lot more importance than uh, hindi or assamese or any other local languages here so i feel that uh, such kind of uh, literature should be also added and we should at least get the scope of studying these things along with our science subjects here now we have seen that there is this trend of students flocking outside the state for higher education so weren't you interested yes i was yes i was interested but without knowing the pros and cons of the educational institute i'm going to be admitted in uh, i didn't feel like going out because the facilities were available here as well except in terms of campus placements better informative services uh, not only from the institution but from various national and international organization or agencies like who unesco etc mm -hmm. and the third thing that uh, spout, spouting up of the upcoming alternative careers mm -hmm. so these were the reasons but since i was interested in a general stream of line and the, i was admitted to a premier elite institute of the northeast so i didn't think it was uh, that necessary for going outside i mean of northeast here i'd like to add one more thing yes there is a change in wavelength of the students mm -hmm. uh, people student community just uh, want to flock out of northeast mm -hmm. without knowing uh, i mean what they want to do exactly of course they know but a few percentage of students i don't think so they're really aware i mean of the facilities available here there's just a uh, change in the mindset Yeah. because uh, students from northeast would like to go to the metros for studies for delhi university or would like to opt for delhi university etc but you will be surprised to know that students from delhi university would think that there is no scope of study of pursuing higher education in india so they would like to uh, move abroad mm -hmm. so that's probably just a change in the mindset but uh, uh, there's another one uh, reason why i think students are flocking out is because Uh, if we uh, see in a state like Manipur, mm -hmm. there are many insurgency problems. So half the year, the schools and the educational institutions are just closed down. Mm -hmm. So it definitely hampers the students' uh, education. Mm -hmm. So that in that case, students would like to move out to a place where there is a better facilities for high education and safer in both ways. Do you think that the system of education here? is fit to prepare students to compete in national level examinations like upsc according to me if we talk about the aps examination out here in assam then i think to certain extent we are competitive people do get sufficient seat but if we compare with the upsc examination then i think to certain extent it differs like if we compare like outside we've got the elite institutes right so if we compare with assam though we we have a, a gap a gap is maintained and like for uh, like if you see if we the, the way we study out here uh, we do theoretical first and we do practical later but if you we have seen we've heard like you know certain institutes they provide like theoretical and practical all together we have seen like microscopes together while they they're doing their theory works so there were like the difference you know we are still lacking behind to certain extent and i think we should put up something you know there should be more institutes coming out here and like experience experienced teachers are required you know coming from outside to to our place we need experienced teachers i would like to add a point out here yeah. um it is not necessary that that um, uh, while do men after coaching i'll definitely get upon uh, into upsc exams or i will clear that uh, uh, 
it also depends upon the uh, students that uh, uh, how means how sincere they are and some other things like um, uh, we we lack some in infra infrastructures out here so viewers meeting the intellectuals and the students from the premier institutes of northeast we got an idea on what they think on the present pattern of education so finally i would like to end in the words of ben sweetlin we cannot hold a torch to bright another's life without brightening our own. So thank you viewers for watching this program.